Thanks for tuning in uh, to this documentary. My name is John Kang. I am the owner of the famous Dumpling Bros. Came from the bottom, in the bottom was so cold. Came from the bottom, now I'm hotter than a stove. About to put my sons and my daughters in some foes. At first it was a dream, now we running Dumpling Bros. We out here yeah. and it feel good yeah. when you live right and you live good. Yeah. I love God and I'm still yeah. hooked. Cause when I was bad, he was still good. Yeah. You... So I'm 42 years old, uh, have a beautiful wife and uh, four children. Uh, and we live in Denton, Texas, and we also operate our business out of Denton, Texas. Play. Every snap we going in to the kid dog, we ain't going in. My passion is my alarm clock. See y'all in that A. -L. My passion is my alarm Let clock. Go. I do it for the F A. -L. My parents um, are descendants from Korea, and uh, my mother was a nurse, my father was an Air Force pilot. In 1975, the United States had a shortage of nurses, so they sponsored um, from all over, all over uh, different countries, registered nurses. My mother was the very fortunate one. Our whole family was sponsored to come over, full citizenship. We landed in Chicago. Uh, my parents spoke zero English. Uh, I don't know how my mother made it through her career as a nurse in America, to be honest. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. But as she worked at the hospital, my dad would just pick up random jobs. Um, he was a busboy, gas attendant back then, you know, we had gas attendants that pumped the gas for you. And uh, 1976, voila, Johnny was born. They call me Johnny. And so, uh, I was born in Chicago, and uh, right after that, we actually moved for a few years to Louisville, Texas. And that's where my mother and dad just saved up money, saved up money, and they opened their own Chinese restaurant. And from there, my dad took off. His career as a restaurateur blew up. Um, we had to move our family to New York City. And so my dad had opened up a trading company, trading all over Korea, China, the U.S., bringing imported foods to the United States. Fast forwarding to now, we opened the Dumpling Bros in October of 2015 with one trailer. And I owe uh, a lot of praise and, and credit to my, my sister uh, and her husband, Eugene and Daniel, to invest in me to open this trailer. Uh, we didn't have money for a restaurant, so we thought, hey, let's prove a concept. Uh, and the dumpling concept really came from my grandma, which was passed down you know, from generations to generations to my dad, and my dad would make it on special occasions. My dad would make him so badass. Me and my friends would be like, hey, make it every day for us, you know? And so he'd make a whole bunch and he'd freeze them. I mean, my dad would make bundles and bundles, hand rolled. And back then, I would just watch him do it. That recipe stuck with me. Uh, my father passed away roughly about six years ago. He went into a coma before I, I could get to the hospital. At this time now, they live in Frisco. He, he passed away at Plano Presbyterian Hospital. And I lived in Houston, Texas, running a dealership down there. And I got a call and they said, hey, come up now. And so I drove as fast as I could and um, he had already gone into a coma. I was sitting there just, um, you know, trying to talk to him and something resonated in me. Um, that I wanted to do something for him. I just didn't know what, what it was. So eventually he passed away and I, I really regretted that I didn't get to say goodbye while he was awake. And so the reason why we came up with the Dumpling Bros is to honor him and his recipe. Kind of give you a whole snapshot of, of, of how we got here. Um, just to be completely transparent with you. Um, Man, I used to be a jerk um, and lived a uh, very, very selfish, all about me type of lifestyle where even my family didn't call me when my dad was sick because they thought I didn't care. I was so focused and um, 
climbing the corporate ladder. I was working at, you know, big dealership names. I was working for Ferrari, Lamborghini, all these, all these great luxury cars. And, and I thought I was at the pinnacle of my life, making the most money. I was only 28 years old, um, early 30s, you know, in that range, finally got it. Um, and honestly, my life was still empty. I had fake friends uh, and, and not all of them were fake, but you know, mostly my own doing. I either did them wrong uh, or screwed them over. I looked around, um, this is uh, right after my dad's death. Um, my, my, I was married at the time with my first wife and she had left me and uh, I was sitting in a uh, empty apartment, um, bottle of bourbon, and um, a new refilled prescription of Xanax um, because of my depression and I was just being medicated and I woke up one morning on a Tuesday morning and I, I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I had no hope, uh, I had no um, ambition, I just had enough. Like nobody cares, uh, there was a lot of guilt, shame, uh, you name it, that I was carrying. One morning, Tuesday morning, woke up around 7.30 a.m., went on Google, and I typed in how to commit suicide. I have about 58 bars of Xanax that should probably kill you if I take all of this with a bottle of bourbon. So I did. I was shaking, I had pills in one hand, and, and, and you know, the bourbon in one hand, and, and I was taking 10 by 10, and. Uh, I was on my knees crying and, and I was just praying to God. I wasn't even a believer at the time. I was just praying, God, I suck. Everything sucks about me, my life, my family, the relationships. Just send me to hell. That's exactly what I said to him. I said, please forgive me uh, for who I am. Uh, and who I become because at that point I become a monster pretty much and um, And I said goodbye a few weeks prior to that I visited a church called the village I was just so depressed I wanted to go out and just talk to meet somebody and there was a guy named Scott and he um, He met me at the door and, You know as every church does they ask for your phone number your address and all that stuff So I, I gave it to them and think nothing of it and at that day, he showed up at my house and found me on the floor. All I remember was blacking out, waking up in the hospital with doctors and nurses staring at me at 8.30 p.m. So this is like, you know, 12 hours later. And they're telling me it's a miracle. They see the amount of medicine in my system. Um, they just said, man, we don't know what's going on, but did you try to kill yourself? And I was like, yeah, I tried to kill myself. And uh, due to that circumstance and the medicine that I took, they put me into a detox facility for seven days to be monitored. And I'll tell you, those seven days were just the best days of my life because there, for some reason, it felt like I had died. And all that guilt, shame, and Everything I was carrying was buried. And I woke up like this new man, and I wanted to know and find out who saved me. Because I didn't save myself, right? If I could have, I would have. I never did. And I, you know, I'm in my 30s at this point. And so, of course, Scott and other people were just telling me about the gospel, and they're telling me that you know Jesus had saved me, and so I wanted to find out for myself. So, I just started researching and researching, and, and uh, it proved to me that it was God who saved me. From then on, I felt like my life has changed dramatically. Um, it's not all peaches and cream, but it's uh, it's challenging but it's, it's worth it. Um, it was never worth it before. You know, cutting throats, um, shadiness, all these things that I was doing to climb that corporate ladder, 
you know, stepping on whoever I need to step on. Looking back on it, it just wasn't worth doing. Life these days, six years afterwards, I have a new wife, a family. We have a, not only one food truck, but we've grown to two food trucks. We are opening a uh, commercial kitchen uh, dedicated for food trucks to uh, commissary out of. Uh, and we have other plans too coming up. And so um, that is kind of like my past going towards uh, the Dumpling Bros. Um, and right now we have one truck that's stationed at Eastside Draft House. And uh, we are so uh, gracious enough to be there permanently. We've taken our truck down to Hurricane Harvey when that hit in Houston. Um, we, my staff is just amazing. Um, it's just so grateful for my staff. They volunteered their time. We did a little GoFundMe here in Denton, uh, asked for some donations. We didn't care, whatever, food, money, gas, whatever you could do. We gathered up some supplies, we jumped in our food truck, and we headed to Houston. And we went into the trenches, and we fed um, firefighters, we, we fed the entire Houston Police Department. Uh, we made about 2,500 meals in two days. And you know, when we opened this business, of course it's for profit, but we, but we also want to do good things with it. And so if we have an opportunity to serve the poor and to, you know, serve the hungry or the homeless or to do good things, that's what we're about. We're not just about getting rich, you know. I think if we're getting rich, I'll tell you, don't open a food truck. <laughs> you want to do something else, right? Uh, food truck is, is challenging, uh, but also, too, it's very rewarding because of our fans, our followers. They leave great feedback. We take that over money any day to know that we're serving our community to the fullest. Uh, we're going to be starting a new uh, channel and uh, video about entrepreneurship, uh, about cooking, about food trucking, about just everything, life. And so I'm going to be videoing that and broadcasting live. So please follow us on social media, on Facebook. Um, it's the famous Dumpling Bros Food Truck. Like us and follow our page on there. Instagram, we're at Dumpling Bros. Uh, Twitter, we're at Dumpling Bros underscore 76. Um, and we have Tumblr and, and uh, LinkedIn as well. And again, you can always just follow my personal page, John Kang. We do need your support. Look forward to your support. Uh, we do this for you. I hope you uh, now understand and see what this company is about and what it's founded on. Uh, it's founded on passion. It's founded on love. It's founded on care. Uh, we love our staff. We love our customers. We love our community. We want to do everything we can to support uh, our community. I know that we're not a huge company, but uh, we have goals and aspirations to get there one day. So keep an eye on us, follow us, and uh, show us some love. Thank you. Dump the bro.